Hi, I'm Officer Steve Robinson, Training Coordinator with Motor Vehicle Enforcement within the uh, Division of Motor Vehicle, uh, the Iowa Department of Transportation. We're here today to talk about chains uh, and load securement, how to look at the chains, uh, make sure you have the correct, uh, correct style chains and uh, they're not damaged and do a proper securement for a heavy, heavy vehicle. Before we start actually chain, chaining down the piece of equipment, uh, the first step is actually checking your chains over to make sure that they're not damaged and that you have a proper type of chain to begin with. Uh, most of the chains that the Department of Transportation has are going to be 3 8 inch transport chain. And the way to check that is first of all you're going to measure the, the width of the strand and then we're going to take, uh, take a look at the, each strand and make sure that there's a marking somewhere on the strand that says G7, L7 or something with a 7 on it to show that it's a type 70 chain. If it doesn't have any markings on it, we have to take it back to what's called a Type 30 chain, which is basically about a quarter of the securement value of a full, full, full length chain. Before I start uh, putting chains on the, the heavy equipment, I'm looking at the chain to make sure it has proper, uh, uh, the, the proper width and uh, we know what type of size and uh, type of chain it is, as well as looking for damage to the chain itself. Uh, to start off with, we're looking for a marking on the chain, such as this RG7 that tells us it's a Type 7 uh, or 70, or in other words, a transport chain, and then we're going to measure out the, the width of the strand, and at which point we're actually looking at about 3 8 inch there. Uh, so the 3 8 inch, if I look it up in the book, for a type 7 chain, should be about 6,600 pounds of securement. If there's no markings here, we're going to take it back to like this chain is over here. Uh, it has no markings on it, so we have to call it a type 30 chain. I also have several pieces of straps here. These are 4 inch straps. Unmarked straps usually get uh, about a thousand pounds uh, per inch of width. Uh, so a three inch strap would get 3,000 pounds, four inch strap would get 4,000 pounds of load securement value. Any type of damage in, uh, in this, uh, for especially for like a four inch strap, we need to have three quarters inch of damage. Anything more than that um, basically uh, violates the strap and it can't be used. These are four inch straps. Uh, you can use a four inch strap, uh, you basically get a thousand pounds per inch of width of strap. So, so the table would give us uh, unmarked would say 4,000 pounds. If there was a marking on it that say would uh, say that it's valued at 5,000 pounds, we would give the value at 5,000 pounds as long as the, the tag was on the strap, still attached to the strap, and uh, was legible. Now this strap has a couple, a little bit of damage in it, uh, a lot of damage in it, and then there's more than three quarters inch damage to the strap and we're right at three quarter inch damage there. Uh, this strap would be void and just needs to be thrown away or used for some other purpose. Uh, shouldn't be used for your load securement. Okay, we're looking at this uh, smaller chain here. Uh, it seems to be in good shape. We're looking for the marking on it. So there's a, a G7. So it's a type, same as type as the other type we were looking at earlier. We're looking at the width here. It appears to be a quarter inch in width. So it's a quarter inch uh, type 7 chain, we'll use the book to look it up. And this one here, again, was 5 8 excuse me, 3 8 inch uh, wide. And it's also a type 70 chain. And then when we're down to a type 30 chain, or 3 on the, the strap, and we're also looking at a quarter inch chain. When we're looking in the book, we'll go to the type 70 for the two, two, uh, two chains. You can see the quarter inch gets about 3,150 uh, pounds of load securement value. And then on our 3 8 inch, we're up to, allowed up to 6,600 pounds. On the Type 30 chain, it was also a uh, quarter inch. We'd only get about 1,300 out of it. If we have an unmarked chain that we measured out at 3 8 inch, we would take that unmark and move it all the way down to the lowest, uh, lowest coil, or the proof coil. And that only gives 2,650 pounds of uh, uh, working load limit. Other things I'm looking for in here is I don't see any type of uh, damage to the links. I'm looking at the links side on so I can see that there's no twisting to them. And I don't see any type of stretching in the links. I'll show you a couple examples here in just a second uh, of, of proper uh, or improper uh, links that are twisted or damaged. This does have a clevis splice on it, which is an acceptable repair. It's about the only acceptable repair that uh, we'll, we'll accept uh, uh, to, to do replace the original pieces. It has both cotter pins in place, and it also has both of the uh, uh, securement pins as well. On the other chain here, we're looking at several different repairs that are unacceptable and several different damages. You can see on this one that the, the link is twisted or bent. It's not going to be unacceptable. We do not use bolts to repair links. It's also non-acceptable. You're looking for any type of broken 
broken links, again, more bents. And back here, we're gonna find a little bit of a, a figure eight type setup. Probably on this bent one as well. Uh, you're gonna see a little bit of a figure eight setup, which means that link has been stretched out and a stretched link is not acceptable either. We've got several different type of repair items here that are, uh, are common and sold at stores, but they're not acceptable for load securement. Uh, the first one being a weld link or a lap link. Uh, the second one here appears to be a cold shut link. Anytime you gotta hammer your, uh, your pieces together, it's not acceptable. The uh, next piece here is called a quick link. It's not acceptable. And it looks like we got half a clevis here. Um, the half clevis would be okay uh, for a certain amount of your, your repairs. Got one more type, which would be a quick link. This is one side or a half of a uh, um, cold link. Uh, we're gonna put the other half on here. Again, that's not something that's acceptable to, uh, for load securement uh, as, a, as a repair. The last thing we'll kind of discuss, is we already kind of looked at the table uh, for the chain. If the chain already has a uh, piece of uh, a tag on it that tells us what the load securement is listed on here, so we'll find usually a stamp inside here that will tell us how many pounds that it's secured for. Uh, as long as that tag's still attached to, to the chain, we'll go ahead and we'll use whatever value is listed on there. Okay, we're gonna start off by putting uh, chains. We need, a, with a heavy piece of equipment that's over 10,000 pounds, we need a four point tie down and then a direct tie down method. Uh, so we're gonna start off with Tim putting the chain on. Uh, we would like to get it at a 45 degree angle at, at all possible. You're gonna see this first attempt probably is gonna not work out too well for Tim. First thing we're going to do is we're going to hook into the pocket, uh, into the rub rail, and he's going to make, uh, Tim's going to hook into an eyelet uh, provided by the manufacturer. You can see it's coming over the top of another piece of a uh, part of the equipment. And as he puts on his uh, binder to do a tight, tighten it down, uh, we're not going to get a good 45 degree angle right off that eyelet. It leaves uh, a lot of opportunity for the device to loosen up. Uh, and cause problems. So it's not a good securement, securement method. We're gonna actually use a cross, uh, cross chain securement method. Tim's hooking into an approved uh, pocket. Uh, this is provided by the manufacturer and he's gonna come underneath uh, the arms of the, the bucket. Uh, creates uh, fewer spots to, uh, to rub against the, the chain. He's also using a side pocket a little bit further out to get a better 45 degree angle uh, tie down off of it. As Tim hooks this into this, you notice he's going around the whole link and not trying to put the hook inside the, the loop of the link. And he's going to tighten down and we've got a nice good 45 degree angle on this. Uh, it works much better for securing, uh, keeping uh, forward and uh, sideward movement uh, from occurring. You notice we have a hook point here uh, provided by the manufacturer of the, the heavy equipment. It does not lend itself to a good tie down spot uh, with this particular chain. So we went ahead and had Tim hook up to the axle, which is an approved method uh, for your four point sec uh, securement. One thing you wanna make sure when you're doing a securement to an axle though, is to make sure that there's no brake hoses, tubes, or other type of uh, airlines uh, uh, available or gonna be damaged uh, using this method. Okay, with this particular chain, we have a smaller hook that we're using. So it went through the uh, tie down point uh, that the manufacturer provided uh, without any problems. So we'll go ahead and we'll use the tie down point versus using the, an axle. Tim's gonna rehook this with his ratchet device uh, pointing down on the, against the deck, against the uh, uh, back of the trailer here. Uh, one of the reasons for doing that would keep, keep the device from popping open as it's driving down the road, which is one of the requirements of our load securement. We need to make sure all our uh, chains and load securement uh, items are uh, not capable of opening up while, while in transit. What we're doing with the extra chain here so it doesn't pop out uh, off the side of the vehicle uh, and possibly damage a car driving by. And it also supply, uh, supplies a securement uh, method for the ratchet not to come unhooked while it's going down the road. Here we have two, uh, two chains that are just too short to make the, make the securement work. Uh, a lot of people would go ahead and try to make, uh, make one longer chain out of the two chains and that's not an acceptable method. You cannot interconnect uh, chains uh, to make one longer chain. What we did here is uh, we have to lower the bucket as part of one of the requirements for anything that's over 10,000 uh, pounds, blade or end loader, uh, as well as chain it down to the deck. In this case, we used a uh, smaller chain, couldn't quite make the, uh, the hook, so we went ahead and hooked the binder right directly into the rub rail, which is an approved method. As long as the rub rail doesn't have any damage, 
and it stays tight. We've gotten uh, all four points on this uh, particular vehicle. The bucket's been lowered down to the deck and we've uh, added the securement chain to it uh, to make sure it's secured. Uh, a couple things that we're going to do is we're going to make one final check of the equipment to make sure that everything's secured down properly. The first thing I've noticed uh, when I did my uh, walk around on this is the chain is not tight. We're going to make sure that we either tighten this back down or grab another, another loop or two to, to make it tight. Then on the back here, with our tie down, one of the reasons we want to do a 45 degree angle uh, is we got to prevent movement from up, down, left, right, and backward and forward. And with coming back to the back here like this, we didn't get that 45 uh, degree tie down. So we'll still prevent backwards and forward movement and to a certain extent some side to side movement. But we're not going to be able to do a lot with the up and down movement. We're not getting enough pressure on the down downside to, to make this work. It'd be better if we could hook it into this pocket. If that's the case where uh, that we can't reach that pocket, then unfortunately we'd have to unhook everything and move the, uh, the loader forward uh, so we can get that 45 degree tie down. Okay, one of the last piece, uh, one of the last things we need to do for load securement is when we have a, a piece of equipment that articulates uh, side to side, uh, we need to make sure that if we have a mechanical locking pin like uh, we have on this particular uh, machinery, uh, that we, we put the locking pin in place and make sure the locking pin's firmly, uh, firmly secured with the cotter and uh, the hairpin. We have this locking pin in place now. If, if, the, if the machinery was missing the locking pin or did not come with a locking pin, uh, we'll need to go ahead and do a four point tie down with uh, four chains on the front and four chains on the back side of the, the piece of equipment to uh, lock out that articulation. The last uh, thing we're gonna look at when we're doing our, our walk around before we drive away with this piece of vehicle is wanna make sure that any rock, dirt, and other heavy um, debris is swept off the, the deck here. Uh, you use a broom, hand, whatever you need to do to get rid of as much of it as possible. This is one of the biggest complaints the DOT gets uh, as far as the rock comes off, goes through somebody's windshield, uh, and it's a claim that we, we would have to pay out or the trucking company would have to pay out. On behalf of the Department of Transportation, I'd like to thank you for watching and uh, remember that safety starts